What is up YouTube, Raptor here. I'm starting out on a new project and this one is something I've had in the back of my mind for a really long time at this stage. No big reveal because you've already read the title of this video, but we're building a virtual pinball table. So how this comes about, I've always been a big fan of the pinball ever since I was young and um, indeed my handle has always been RPT. As for this reason, you could only have three characters in a pinball high school. Uh, incidentally, if you wonder why I introduced myself as Raptor, it's because some friends that we used to play Left 4 Dead 2 and some other games for some reason filled in the blanks between my initials to mean Raptor. Uh, it's easier to say than RPT in games, so it's kind of stuck with me since then. But um, that's a digress. Uh, in terms of the pinball, uh, not to kind of give you my life story ramble on too much, um, but. As a kid, I had a few of the cheap plastic tables that you can get given at Christmas, and um, even though it's got a lot of playtime, despite being, of course, toy versions of the real thing, um, it was because I was pestering my parents because I was kind of obsessed with video games and pinball from the first, as soon as I discovered both of those things. Um, this transitioned into my teenage years, I suppose, after I put away the plastic pinball machines, uh, when the bars I would frequent would have pinball machines. Um, they'd come and go over the years. The notorious bear being the bar of frequent, which was a well-known biker bar in England. Um, as the years sort of go on, you start to see pinball machines less and less. You find, and today they're very much a rarity. It's, I think I know of one in my city that I live in. Um, it's a Street Fighter. It needs some repairs. Um, although it's mostly fine to play, I've played it a couple of times. Um, it's in a bar, but that bar is, they've just got a lot of video gaming stuff, he's got Time Crisis in there, you know, he's got a selection of other games upstairs, so it's a bit of an oddity bar to begin with. Um, the idea of pinball then, um, it always seemed as an unobtainable, you know, unobtainium, an unrealistic goal. As a child you sort of look up at these loud bright machines which have a life of their own and it's a sizable chunk of furniture no doubt. Um, and that coupled with obviously how complex they are and knowing how I am I would obviously have to learn the maintenance and everything goes along with that. Uh, you know, I couldn't just have someone else come and tune it up like a piano. Uh, you'd have to learn how the entire pinball machine works, which is daunting if you've seen underneath the hood a real pinball machine. Um, that's still the goal at some point is to own a real pinball, at least you know I'd like to, but this leaves us in the meantime with one alternative, and that is of course a virtual pin. Um, the pros of which I suppose are quite obvious, you get multiple tables in the one machine, um, it's arguably cheaper than a real pinball, though this is very build specific as many people do spend enough on the virtual machine that they could probably afford to find a real pin in good condition for the same money if they looked around enough and were so inclined um, it's essentially a computer with some bells and whistles which for me I can apply a lot of knowledge there which uh, helps and fill in any gaps with Google as I tend to do uh, the woodworking sort of cabinet making side of the situation has always been the biggest challenge, um, which we'll get onto later. Um, other pros: ability to disassemble if needed. Um, looking at a note, my notes here, um, but it's not bloody likely I'm going to disassemble a pinball machine after building one. Um, it can double up as an arcade, or really anything else a computer can do. So you can slap a arcade controller on, play vertical games, which is something I'm thinking about doing with this one. Um, as for cons, uh, you need to build it from scratch, as you know, with a real pinball you'd be given something that pretty much works, or at least if you're buying, even if you're buying a fix it will mostly be working, uh, with a virtual you're obviously building it all. Um, you could argue it's not as realistic, and you could argue it's not as fun, um, but it depends what your definition of fun is, of course it's subjective. Space is the other concern I have personally. Um, I live in a shared house, I've got three other housemates, um, so for me the space needed to construct a pinball machine over time required agreement from the other people living here. So I'm pretty much at the stage where I know it's something I'm going to do, and I'm going to at least attempt it. Um, the first massive hurdle, as I was saying, was the space of it. Um, now the way we have the house set up, there are bedrooms upstairs, mine's already full of consoles and other gaming, so it's not possible. Ground, and even then, 
it wouldn't fit. Um, the ground floor, again, there's a dining room and a kitchen, nowhere to put it. And again, you know, the only place is that there's a basement living room and there's a spare room next to that. So this was being used by my housemate um, as basically a crafting sewing room. Um, and it was a couple of years since she was using it, you know, in a really major way. Um, at that time, it wouldn't have been possible because she was really churning out things and selling them a lot. However, things change, and so to cut a long story short, uh, uh, it's uh, not being used right now, and it's turned into essentially a chaos room, so it needs to sort out anyway. Uh, and what better way to sort a room than to put a pinball in its place of the mess? Um, I pitched the idea, therefore, and was delighted to have no objections, really. Um, she's also a fan of the pinball, which does help out there. Uh, the plan was at this stage to go for and build a mini machine anyway, which would be a 27 inch playfield monitor, if you imagine about two thirds the size of a real normal stand up cabinet. Um, so, uh, long story short, again, I got permission from the housemates to and started researching on 27 inch cab designs, even messaged a couple of vendors on the internet about these 27 inch kits that are being sold some places. Um, asking questions about the customization and some other minor things but I didn't actually get any responses there they were basically eBay vendors anyway so um, the final design I looked at is the 27 inch fat flat pack from the virtualpin.eu I uh, messaged again asking some questions and actually I got a reply from this seller um, which was refreshing after two no replies and looking like I'd found a professional organisation when it comes to the virtual pin board um, I started pricing and thinking about my options for building a mini. Basically, decided at that stage that you know, I'm going to go down the Virtua Pin route. For the biggest reason is that they'd sell a kit that looks good. Uh, you can get a lockdown bar in the correct size for the kit, which would have been difficult or possibly you know expensive to do and source elsewhere potentially um, for a reduced size custom kind of machine. Um, well, if you don't realise, well, a lockdown bar is essentially a big piece of metal at the end of the table. Uh, you rest your hands on there and it locks down into position the playfield glass, which sits on top, um, which is why it's called a lockdown bar. And, yeah, in my opinion, it's just one of those necessities you have to have if you're looking to build a virtual machine, because you're going to be feeling it every time you play. You have your hands resting there. Um, I feel other sacrifices you can make around the cab, um, but there's less of an argument to be made for sacrificing a lockdown bar or a plunger. Um, those two must have, so, at least in my designs for this thing. Um, so I measured it all up, started to price it all up, uh, thinking about the logistics of clearing out this room, which has been chaos for six years now. Uh, well, anyway, um, thought about it again. Um, you know, 27 inch, nice enough. I'll kit it out as well as I can for the size. Um, and, you know, it's there to make up for the lack of space. Um, in doing my research, by the way, it's already becoming clear that building a cabinet um, is one of these hobbies that you're going to take a lot of time info gathering um, from various places. You know, it's kind of a niche thing with a high barrier to entry, really, in re retrospect to other things that are kind of better explained um, thankfully that's a road that's getting better better travelled all the time which I've seen since it was about three or four years ago and I started looking you know and sort of gathering information regarding VPIN um, you know if you wanted to build a basic you could but you want all the bells and whistles if you're going to go to this trouble you may as well go the hog of getting something that's really well put together in my opinion um, so, you know, it's a scary concept, it's a good deal of money. If things don't work out for you, like, even for, <clears throat> you know, even for my 27-inch little safety net builders, I was thinking of it, really. Um, it's a commitment. So looking into it all, another person on a forum commented that he had planned on a 27-inch screen. Uh, he hooked up a 40-inch TV he had one day and uh, couldn't go back from there, so... You know, it was, oh, this is how the game needs to be played. It was really then I decided to see how the footprint might look for a full-size pinball cabinet. So, you know, took out the measurements on Google, made a little tape angel on the floor. Um, and actually, looking at it, it's not as massive as I had in my head, even for a wide-body cab. 
it still would fit through the doors of my house with clearance so there's no that's not a reason against it um, this really led me to quite frantically research the difference in costs for a larger game all the things to take into consideration you know we're not not just talking about a larger cabinet it's larger you know the well, it's the cab itself you've got two or three screens you've got to you know get a larger size potentially lockdown bar and other trimmings bigger um potentially more powerful computer to drive everything so uh, as far as the space was concerned i pitched the idea and again miraculously got the green light from the housemates although it's something they knew i have known i'd want to do for a while um this really making a full-size cap sits with me a lot better it's a lost chart a lot less chance to be you know, making a mistake that you'll regret, I think, with a full-size machine, as it can pack it, you know, you can really kit it out in a good way. It's going to be something that's more of a actual thing for everyone to enjoy as well, and visitors, you know, the pinball machine is an iconic piece of furniture to have sitting there. Everyone knows what one is. Um, so essentially, yeah, I'm throwing whatever money I have saved, and then some into a virtual cabinet, full-size, wide-body. Um, haven't built one of these before, but now, from a lot of research, countless hours, in fact, searching offline and on online, um, I believe I've got a fair idea of what's involved. Um, I had a few more questions for the virtual pin guys, which they've been fine dealing with, in fact, really good. Um, I think I've got the source of my cabinet in the form of a flat, flat back, also with all the trimmings, but with their mind, you know, so I have to worry about the size of the project as much. Um, I, it's all ready, it's cut. It's just a case of constructing it, then I can get the tools, assemble it, and then enjoy kitting it out. Um, yeah. Not only that, the cost of fully assembled one obviously would have been out of my budget, and I did kind of want to put it together myself in terms of at least the flat pack option. You know, cutting bits of wood doesn't really appeal to me, but putting something together that's basically all mine is what it does appeal to me. Um, so yeah, from there, loosely priced it all up, decided on the machine I wanted to run it on, and um, there was a debate there about 4K or 1080p, so I decided I could indeed afford to go the 4K path, which was, in my opinion, worth the extra expense. Um, there's a Facebook group I discovered called Visual Pinball Junkies, and they put out a recommendation build for virtual machines as part of um, their FAQ, and I used... This is a loose guidance, really, when going to UK PC Part Picker, which is the site I always use for making PC builds. Um, in that FAQ, they make a strong argument for an AMD Ryzen-based PC, and so I did go down that route in the end. I've always been a blue team player in the past of Intel, but for this specific purpose, the AMD does make more sense. Mm. Um, definitely from a price-performance perspective anyway. So I got some help from one of the admins on that. Facebook group, uh, Jens, who might be, the, you know, he commented on which the best screen he used would fit my build. Um, I will link his channel below. He's just finished his second virtual pinball cab, in fact, so it's a pretty good idea of what we're talking about here. If you want an idea as to watch his review of his own cabinet. So this brings us so up to current day, essentially. Um, ordered all the stuff, got it all delivered. Should hopefully have the basic cab assembly done shortly. Uh, the PC is just assembled now waiting for the graphics card to arrive. Uh, funny thing here, I had most of the PC parts that I wanted uh, excuse me, um, wanted to get a head start on installing Windows and some games and testing out the screens, you know, getting it all hooked up. Um, so hooking it all up. Uh, powers on, nothing coming out of the monitor. So I'm reading all the manuals, searching online, trying to get, you know, getting worried. Oh, something's broken here. Eventually I clicked. Oh, it's AMD. Uh, <laughs> it's not Intel. Uh, Intel's always have inbuilt graphics on their CPUs, from my experience. So you can just plug a CPU alone into a motherboard and have the inbuilt graphics pump it out. Um, it's not the case with AMD in the same way as in they use that bit of space to make the CPUs more competitively priced and don't bother putting an integrated graphics card, you need your own graphics card. So I'm pretty sure this is the case. And once my GPU arrives, I should be able to plug it in and actually test and be able to try, you know, the screens out. Um, as for the cabinet itself, it's arrived as expected, was wrapped extremely well, uh, and it seems to be of high quality from my knowledge of plywood. 
which is limited. Um, the American maple, which is made out of, is actually, which is plywood, um, does smell amazing too. Um, I was kind of going back to sniff it every so often when I was walking past the hall as the first arrival. I did a sucker for woody smells. Anyway, um, going through these unpacking photos, and you can see a, a number of marking stickers, and these match up with the PDF guides that were sent ahead of ordering. Um, didn't come with any instructions as far as I could see inside the box, but that's maybe a bit, you know, it's a bit awkward actually, but um, I have to revert to a tablet or something when building because I don't have a printer. On the other side, um, I mean, it's not rocket science putting together a cabinet, and that's literally the only negative I could find from this so far. Um, maybe it'd be easier in some ways to get cabinet cut locally, and I think doing it again, I might be tempted to go that route, but I'm still ordering a big old pallet of stuff from them anyway, in way of the you know the fittings and fixtures. So, yeah, good that it all fits together. Um, so yeah, it's a brief explanation, I guess. For mostly, actually, the audience really. This video is just at the start. It's mostly my friends and family asking what this pinball I'm talking about is. Um, I'm likely going to be doing some occasional videos moving forward as well into this project. Um, at various decision forks in the road, shall we say, uh, I'll share my experiences and if they occur, which hopefully not too many of my mistakes, um, and I might do some quasi sort of review type videos as well for any of the spoke, bespoke components such as boards that are made specifically for pinball, um, if I feel it particularly warrants a discussion either which way. Um, so on that note, I've done a tutorial type video on this channel before and all on other channels in fact. Um, I want to sort of state clearly I'm not an expert in this field or really any kind of authority on this stuff outside of the PC driving it all. Uh, this is, you're seeing one guy muddling through based on, you know, <laughs> an obsessive interest really and in making it happen and backed up by obsessive internet searching making it happen uh, on the subject matter. So hopefully, you know, a dream will be had by the end of it. Um, what I don't want is people following into this, you know, thinking that any way I'm doing things is the way it must be done or the way it should be done. Um, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to try and shy away from creating any kind of tutorials per se. Um, however, at the same time, I would like to document my journey and I'll highlight anything that works well, in my opinion, um, and try and give, you know, counter arguments. Um, and yeah, hopefully some, some of this is useful for someone trying to put together a cab themselves um, if nothing else it will be certainly at the end of the project there will be a completed video you know demonstrating and showing off it doing its thing um, so yeah rambled on way too long any questions about the world specifically you can certainly feel free to ask um, you can email rptmailing at gmail.com that's rptmailing at gmail.com or comment on the video um, or I, you know, if you're interested in general, I uh, highly recommend you start off at vpinball.com. Um, great links to all the other sites out there and great forums too. So check that one out. All right, this has been Raptor or RPT, as I should say, for pinball. And uh, yeah, see you next time.